Hey everybody, this is Patrick GMT and I'm partnering with Chegg to bring you this video about integration by parts, a technique, an integration technique that one sees in calculus. So just a little introduction to integration by parts and we'll look at a couple of examples. So where does integration by parts come from? I mean, if you forget the formula, you can always uh, recall it if you remember that it undoes the product rule. So suppose I've got two functions, f times g, and I take the derivative of those two functions, f times g. Well, by the product rule, it says we get uh, f times g prime plus f prime times g. Well, the idea is I can integrate both sides. So if I integrate the left side and integrate the right side, and recall that if things are being separated by a plus or a minus, I just integrate those a piece at a time. So the idea is if you take a derivative and then you integrate, well, you're back to where you started. So I've got f times g, and I'm going to leave <clears throat> the stuff on the right side alone. I'm going to do a little relabeling. I'm going to say let u equal f of x and let v equal g of x. Well, you can think about du as being our f prime and our dv as being g prime, being a little sloppy with our notation here. But on the left side, I would have uv. On the right, I've got the integral of u dv plus the integral of, I'm going to write this part first, g would be v, f prime is du. So I can rewrite this as uv minus the integral of v du. That's going to equal the integral of u dv. And typically you see it written as the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. <clears throat> okay, so what's the process? So the idea is you're, you're, you're kind of imagining that you're starting with the integral on the left side. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick something, we're going to label that as u, we're going to label something else as dv. And from that, from u, we'll take uh, the derivative or the differential to get du. We need v back, so to get v, we're going to have to integrate our expression dv. And then we're just going to fill it in, and hopefully what's on the right side we can deal with a little bit easier. Okay? There's a lot of problems. Again, you may have to do a u substitution first. You may have to use integration by parts multiple times. There's a lot of things that you might have to do. So the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. It's not always clear what u should be uh, and what your dv should be. Typically, I pick u to be something that when I take the derivative of it, it goes away, hopefully. So I'm going to pick dv. So in this case, I'm going to pick u to be my x minus 2. My du is going to be dx, and I, I recognize, right, if I pick u to be x minus 2, the derivative of that is just 1, and then we'll tack on our dx. Well, dv would have to be the other stuff, cosine of x dx. The antiderivative of cosine of x is just sine x. Okay, so be careful, right? Here we're taking a derivative, and here we're integrating. So you're, you're doing derivatives and antiderivatives and all this stuff's kind of mixed up together. So uh, just kind of make sure you keep track of that because that's definitely a place where mistakes are made. So it says we get u, which is x minus 2, times v, which is sine x, minus the integral of v, which is sine x, times du, which is just dx. So now I think this is great. I went from... This expression, I went from this integral, which I wasn't sure about, and I've turned it into something. Notice there's no integral here. We don't have to integrate this first term. We're done. Now I just have this integral left over to deal with, and that one I can integrate. So I'll leave my x minus 2 times sine x alone. The antiderivative of sine x would be negative cosine x, so I would get negative negative cosine x or positive cosine x. I've done all my integration, so let's now plug on our plus C, and that would be our solution. It's much like U substitution as well, right? Because sometimes you have to do a U sub. Maybe you pick U incorrectly. It's very possible that maybe um, you should switch your U and your DV. Sometimes that'll work. Um, it's just one of those things. It's not always necessarily clear, so you may have to try different things. Let's just look at one more example here, the integral of X divided by 10 to the X. Okay, so again, the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. So I've got to pick u to be something. I've got to pick dv to be something. 
let's see, what would be the best way to do this? Um, I think I'm going to, again, just try to pick u to be equal to x, because again, when I take the derivative of that, I just get 1 dx. That means my dv would be 1 over 10x. Okay, so be careful about that, right? It's not just 10x, it's going to be 1 over 10x. Um, and let's see, so if I think about that as being 10 to the negative x, okay, so to integrate 10 to the negative x, right, this is already, you know, maybe a little tricky. You would have to do a u substitution, and I don't want to use u because I'm already using u here, so maybe I'll call it a, a, a p substitution for Patrick. So p equals negative x, dp would be negative 1 dx, so I would have the integral of 10 raised to the power of p, negative dp, so I can pull that out. Well, if I integrate 10 to the power of p, I would get 10 to the p over the natural logarithm of 10. I still have my negative floating around, plus c. Okay, so it says when I integrate v, I'm going to get negative, and then I would, uh, you know, substitute back in. So I would get 10, let's see, negative 10, my value of p is negative x, divided by the natural logarithm of 10. Okay, so even, you know, just to go from dv to v, sometimes it might be a little tricky. You may have to do, like, integration within the integration. Okay, so it says we get u, which is x, times v, which is negative 10, raised to the negative x power, divided by the natural logarithm of 10, minus the integral of v, which is negative 10, raised to the negative x, divided by the natural logarithm of 10, multiplied by du, which is just dx, Okay, so now I think we're, we're in luck here. So this is negative x times 10 raised to the negative x over the natural logarithm of 10. Just rewriting our first term here. All I'm doing is just pulling out the negative. A negative and a negative, well, that's a positive. I could pull out the 1 over the natural logarithm of 10. And then I'm still integrating 10 raised to the negative x dx. But we just figured out what happens when we integrate that. That's what we did over here on the right side. So we've already done that work. So I've got negative x times 10 raised to the power of negative x over the natural logarithm of 10 plus 1 over ln of 10. And we just said if you integrate 10 to the negative x, we get negative 10 to the negative x divided by the natural logarithm of 10 plus c. Again, I'm just using this. And now there's no more integral, and we've got our solution. So. Okay, so definitely um, lots of little things going in, on in these problems. It's easy to sort of get, you know, lost in, 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 in the woods, I think, a little bit. Take your time. Um, just again, remember, you're doing lots of derivatives and antiderivatives within, within the actual problem, you know, without, without, within the actual thing that you're actually trying to integrate. So just be careful about that stuff. Again, you can always get this formula back if you forget it just by undoing the product rule. And yeah, it's just one more technique that you're going to have in your back pocket. So if it doesn't work at first, again, maybe try different U's, different DV's. And if none of them seem to work, maybe it's just not integration by parts.